scheduled to our podcast. And thanks for being here today with us. For the audience listening in, I mean, the challenge that we all have as voters, not, first of all, not all of us have generators. So, you know, a lot of sailboats don't have generators. Of course, catamarans are having generators more and more now. But again, it depends on the size. Where are you going to put the generator? You know, I, you know, from a cost perspective, I could afford a generator on my own boat. You know, I would do one, but where am I going to put it? There's just no place, you know, I'm going to give up such a huge amount of space and it's going to be impossible to service. And so a lot of boaters are stuck with basically one engine and that's it. And it's not a money thing. It's just, there's no other place. And so I think the play is, well, what can we do with alternators? And, you know, we've been asking more and more of alternators. Well, how can, you know, it's 55, then 90 amps, then 120, then 160, 220. Three Pardon? Three, so, you know, one of those APS 12 volt alternators, I think, is rated at 360 amps. Yeah. I believe it is. And that's just a regular small frame alternator. Yeah, unbelievable. And then um, uh, one of the 24 volt alternators is, is rated at 260, I think, which is, you know, quite a bit more than that's that. That's huge. Yeah. Huge. I, I may be wrong on that. I can't remember off the top of my head. And then, of course, um, you need a pretty fancy controller yeah. because uh, when you're pumping out that much current and uh, now we've got these uh, wake speed controllers uh, which are like uh, the best of what we've had historically on steroids i mean that's oh yeah it's unbelievable really impressive piece of kit but of course the problem with that is uh, the the more powerful these controllers get to be the more complex they are to program so you really have to have someone helping you. I mean, I can't program one of those yet. I haven't done it. I know what it can do. It's mental. It's, it's, but it's I, a I god haven't device. Actually, I haven't installed one yet. Um, so one of the things we, we've done at Ocean Planet is to create a little piece of kit that you can plug into uh, one of those that will give you a whole bunch of drop down menus to simplify the programming because it, it does get to be pretty complex. And if you screw up programming, then you're going to have problems. Yeah. I mean, that's a trade-off, right? Uh, we, yeah. we, we yeah. as boaters, I tell the tell yeah. same thing with going back to lithium or anything, yeah. you know, you, you can't have it both ways. You can't yeah. have all the benefits of technology and yeah. have simplicity. You know, you, yeah. you're going to trade off like complexity for more benefit. Yeah. And that's why I tell people with lithium, I'm like, are, do you need it or do you want it? Yeah. Like, are you, do you need a computer on top of your batteries? What's the reason why you need that level and it might be but not everyone needs all that complexity because the challenge is when it does break then you either do it yourself or you call in a technician sometimes the technicians aren't available uh, in your area or they're in your area but they're not available for eight weeks it's four weeks until they can come on board and that's where people get really frustrated yeah. uh, and then you know we uh we start pumping out power levels we've never dreamed of in the past so then we need cables this big to handle it and then uh, because we've got lithium ion batteries on the boat, they, they don't have that charge acceptance curve that lead acid batteries have. So, so then the, uh, the charging device is running flat out for maybe an hour or two. And then we discover some tiny little thing like we put an ANL fuse in there, with, uh, which has got stainless steel bolts to hold things together. And one of the washers finds its way between the cable lug and the fuel. Oh, yeah. You're done. It's, it's a stainless resistor. steel washer. It acts like a little resistor. It gets hot enough. To where it melts the fuse, even though there's no overcurrent situation. 100. percent The alternator and it blows the alternator. Testify, did it. Right. Uh, one of my first jobs, uh, right. literally did it. 100. percent I remember literally the fuse holder melted. Melted because that melted. It was a right. game changer. I was like, oh my god. And it's surprising how many of us, including myself, I mean, tons. Of that those little washers are actually not conductive. Well, they are, but barely. But they are only 8% the conductivity of copper. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you see it all the time, yeah. by the way. You see well, those washers in between things. Well, you know, you time. have the fuse holder, you have the fuse, you have the cable, you, you blow the fuse, you take the fuse out because you slide it sideways and pull it out. Yeah. The washer drops down. Yeah. You put the new fuse in, and you don't notice you've now got a washer between the fuse and the cable. And it's yeah. this kind of stuff's. You know, we uh, learn this stuff the hard way. Uh, and then there is no mechanism to feed this knowledge out to the rest of the industry. Uh, that's a big problem we have. 
I, I have a dozen photographs on file of brand new boats with stainless steel washers in the circuit on these A&L fuel solders. And these All are, the time. Yep. I'd say and it's that. honestly, it's a, it's a simple mistake that even I could do again. Yes. Knowing it, knowing what I know, knowing, you know, honestly, it, it shouldn't, you know, it, the fuel holder effectively is a bad design because to have some, no one is going to read a manual to put in a fuse. I mean, people don't even read a manual, put in an inverter. There's no way they're going to read a fuse manual and uh, they just make the mistakes. The mistakes are bound to happen. Absolutely bound to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Also, if you found this video interesting, please subscribe. Um, it, Honestly, it does, it does help us to know that all this time that we're investing is actually we're reaching a lot of voters. And I want to thank all of you for watching. Thanks for spending some time with me.